Good morning. This is Bill from Auto Europa Naples, and today I'm braving an incredible horde of early morning mosquitoes. And I do mean incredible. They're like a blanket of buzzing black coming at me. Uh, but I'm bringing you this incredible car. Uh, this is a 2001 Mercedes-Benz C500 Coupe. Uh, it's a very interesting piece historically for Mercedes. It represents a pretty important first and a pretty important last. Uh, the last thing it represents is uh, the final design by storied and famous uh, chief uh, designer Bruno Sacco. Uh, he was a Mercedes, uh, you know, design artist who had a lot of incredible pieces under his belt, including really my all-time favorite, the 126, the 107, you know, the 560 SLs. Uh, you know, he really made some amazing cars, and this was his final masterpiece, and it really is. It's an incredible design. Uh, that's absolutely loaded with technology. Uh, tons of use of aluminum over a steel uh, frame. Uh, you know, the swooping designs, the incredible uh, pillarless features. So the windows go down, leaving a giant crescent and very classic Mercedes style. Uh, it was designed to be incredibly wind resistant, fantastic in the wind tunnel. And then there's a lot of little features that uh, you really don't see that's so typical of Mercedes. For instance, uh, the way this channel here in the back window is designed, uh, it makes rain flying off the top of the hood go into that and get swept around so it doesn't foul your rearward vision. Uh, pretty clever stuff, and uh, it's the kind of thing Mercedes-Benz excels at. You can see the design is very, very pure, very lovely. Uh, you know, it was sort of the uh, beginning of the oval era of Mercedes. You've got those uh, very attractive big xenon headlamps up front, fogs down low star in the grill of course no hood star on what's considered a sportier model and this car was designed not really for the common market but for uh, true mercedes-benz purists you know the guys who really love mercedes have had them for years and uh, want to have one of the nicest ones in their garage and this was it so let's have a look around it we can start inside the trunk Now, in here, it's a nice sized trunk, as you can see. Very, very, uh, look, mosquitoes flying out of there. Good God. Uh, you can see this thing has the original uh, CL uh, brochure that the guy kept. Also, the window sticker, nice set of books. We also have four keys with it, three master keys and a uh, valet, so very well kept. I also happen to know the guy bought a McLaren because I found the window sticker for that in the same bag, so uh, appeared to have pretty quality ownership. The McLaren stickered out at about uh, 319, which seems like a lot to pay for a car. Uh, this one stickered out at only 92,200 back in 01, so a relative bargain by comparison. And this is a one owner vehicle. Now you can see everything back here is nice and proper as it should be. I love this little net to put stuff. Uh, underneath here is your spare and uh, whatever else you need. I love the, uh, the hinges on the car, but uh, they're not the coolest hinges on the car. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, anyway, everything under the trunk is nice and as it should be. It also sucks down like uh, your dad's uh, 82 Cadillac, so pretty cool stuff. All right, maybe your dad didn't have an 82 Cadillac. Either way, you know what I'm talking about. All right, this is always hard to do one-handed, but let's give it a go. Okay, under here, 302 horsepower V8, made into a five-speed automatic, buttery, buttery smooth. Uh, now, you can see these interesting little sensors up there at the top of the shock tower. We'll get into that because that's one of the firsts for this car. Uh, it is uh, equipped with ABC Sport Suspension. This was the first car released with that here. And uh, what that does is takes the place of a traditional sway bar setup. So uh, let's say that you're, you know, driving the car very quickly. Uh, you know, some sort of a squirrel runs out in front of you. You don't want to mow it down, so you slam the brakes. Well, of course, the front end is going to nosedive and the back end is going to pull itself up. So... Uh, with ABC, what happens is fluid is jammed into the front uh, hydraulic shocks very, very quickly. The rear ones are essentially released to free flow, and the car doesn't nosedive. It just stops and brakes nice and even. Uh, that also works for, uh, you know, cornering side to side. So if you're taking a heavy right-hand turn, normally the left hand would sink down. The car would become unbalanced. In this case, it pumps up the left side of the car, keeps the car steady and level, and uh, it's like having infinite 
variable stiffness on your sway bars, uh, you know, down to the corner of the car. It's pretty cool stuff, and it was an incredible leap forward for Mercedes. So, uh, you know, there is a very heavy technological feature that debuted in this uh, pretty amazing car. All right, let's have a look inside. And that's getting into one of my favorite features on this car, which is the door hinges. Look at these two-stage, amazing, incredibly well-engineered hinges. And what they do is make it so the door doesn't open to insane proportions. Like, go open the door on a, you know, 1972 Cadillac uh, Coupe de Ville, and uh, you could give a door dang to a car in another county. Uh, with this thing, the way it works, the whole door slides forward into the fender, uh, the angle doesn't have to be as uh, intense to give you a nice ease of getting in. And uh, it's just very well designed, very well engineered, thoughtful stuff from the Benz engineers. <clears throat> a beautiful uh, chrome seat release. Okay, back there you have room for two, you know, mid-sized adults. You don't have to be tiny to get back there. Uh, very, very comfy, very nice. Look at that, you got seat heating, you got your windows control for the people in the back would be pretty happy. Also a nice little wood roll up. This is, of course, a, uh, you know, personal luxury car, but sometimes you need to stuff people back there. Uh, you can see these beautiful, like, 38-way power seats, lovely ventilated leather, absolutely gorgeous to touch and to sit on. Uh, the door panel, beautiful uh, burlwood trim, lovely controls here, hot and cool seats, memory seats, folding mirrors, of course, your windows, and, uh, you know, just what you'd expect, lovely fit and finish from the Mercedes engineers. Uh, also, these uh, uh, this glass is double-paned, so uh, incredible insulation inside. And it also uh, has an incredibly reflective surface on it uh, that you actually have to, if you have like a transponder for, you know, the tolls and whatnot, you have to put it in this little area up front they give you a radar detector. Otherwise, it just gets reflected back in. But what that does is acts like a very clear window tint and doesn't let in any of the harmful rays and really keeps you cool inside. It's a very nice feature. Now I'm gonna run down both side windows here so you can get a feel for that. And that is Mercedes-Benz very classic pillarless coupe thing. So with both windows down, you see you have this giant area of uh, open window, which is just cool as hell. And Mercedes has been doing that for years. Uh, it's a real tradition and, uh, you know, it makes it tougher to make the car because when you have frames around the glass, it's much more sturdy. But, uh, you know, Benz, of course, does it in a way that retains the sturdiness and gives you that great option. Uh, also, of course, this car has soft closed doors. You just have to put it barely up against that. You don't have to slam it like my girl at home. She just loves slamming doors. Uh, and I always explain, it's a precision German machine. Just get it close and it'll suck itself in. So, very, very nice. I don't know why women slam doors. Maybe girls, tell me, what, what's up with that? Why do you have to slam these things? Well, I know, some guys do it too. All right, inside we are going to find a ton of beautiful stitched leather. Like you've got stitched leather here on the door pole, in the center, uh, up on the dashboard. Again, beautiful stitched leather everywhere. Very, very special cars. We do have mosquitoes flying around in here, so I'm going to put these windows down. Good Lord. Up top you've got a power sunroof. Very nice. You've got your home link garage doors. You've got uh, your SOS if you're lost at sea. Uh, here's your lights and whatnot, very nice stuff. Uh, over here, you've got an array of buttons, and that's one thing I love about S-Classes. They do give you buttons. Uh, of course, you've got navigation, very, very nice. Uh, electronic stability program, that's a traction control. Not gonna let the rear wheel skid around. Uh, this thing is part of that ABC and hydraulic suspension, so you can raise and lower the car. In fact, what I'm gonna do is hit it and walk outside real quick so you can see it lift. All right, one and two. Now, if you could see very slowly, it is raising up the car to a higher level so that if you need a little bit more ground clearance, you're gonna be able to get it. Nice feature for Mercedes on that one. And we're gonna be using that as we uh, leave this driveway. So we have quite a dip there that we could scrape the front end on otherwise. So don't be afraid to use that, people. If you see you're about to scrape the front end, that's a good way to 
not do it. Uh, there's ABC Sport. When you hit that, uh, what that's going to do is stiffen up the uh, spring rate a little bit. It's going to make the steering effort a little heavier for sporty driving and, uh, you know, very nice feature. Uh, this raises, uh, sorry, I should just say it lowers the rear headrests. Maybe it does raise them. I don't think so. Yeah. Put them up manually. You hit that, it pops them back down. Door lock, towing alarm, parktronic, turn off. Uh, you have a uh, sunscreen back there. Very, very nice. Uh, you've got, uh, let me see here. This is pretty cool stuff. That's to eject that. How do we get to the the tape? This is pretty neat stuff. Let's see. That's been a while since, ah, there we go. So you press that and down comes, oh, look at that. There's a cassette in here. Disco George. Oh, that's fantastic. I don't know, maybe it's just disc one. Uh, I would like to hear some Disco George, to be honest with you. Let's see what we got. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I'm grooving to that on the way in. All right, let's turn that back down. Uh, we got climate control down here. Let's see if we can blast some of these mosquitoes out of here. Uh, you see I've got the charcoal filter turned on. Let me turn the fan down a bit. And, uh, you know, everything nice and proper. Uh, over here, you've got cup holders that come out. God, I hate you. The most over-engineered, ridiculous cup holders ever. The fact that they're still there is a testament to how well this car has been maintained. Get those back in before they break. Uh, you've got a two-way thing here, one for your phone setup and one for a deeper storage. Of course, this is a phone from the past, so... Uh, it's not going to help you out too much. If you want Bluetooth, you're going to have to get one of those parrot things. Love the wooden uh, leather steering wheel, multifunction controls. Up there, you've got your Parktronic uh, display. That's going to tell you left and right as you get close to stuff. And in the rear, you can see over there, that little pod hanging down from the top is when you're backing up. All right, so I can pretty much just glide over this big dip with my suspension in the high position. And now that we're nice and safe, press that again and get back to normal uh, ride height. All right, we've got some guy backing it up here. I'll let him do his thing. Uh, so again, the CL is the S-Class Coupe, although this particular model, it's way beyond the... Uh, the traditional S's. It was just, um, you know, much more luxury and, uh, you know, really tailored to that uh, Mercedes enthusiast that probably have it as a fourth car, maybe a fifth car while he had something else fancy on order, like a McLaren. All right, let me just do some terrible getting around this guy here. Now, for such a big car, it handles incredibly nimbly. And, of course, part of that is that advanced suspension uh, and the incredible design. But it's also the lightness of the car. You know, it's really been, uh, you know, de... Not decontented, but demetalized. Uh, you know, bringing in a lot of aluminum, uh, you know, a lot of stiffer structures that require less weight. Let's get our windows back up. And... Um, you know, they've just done a fantastic job back then of, of just lightening this thing up and making it feel much more agile than a car of its bulk should. Uh, in fact, it was, I think, just an inch shorter than a Lexus LS at the time. So, pretty big piece, but it doesn't drive that way. And in fact, it was much uh, quicker around the track than the uh, E430, which is a much smaller package. So, um, you know, again, incredible engineering in this piece. Uh, I won't keep digressing. This is a 2001 Mercedes-Benz CL500, one owner car, 56,000 miles. You know what? I mean, it is going to be collectible. Every Mercedes coupe is. Uh, and in the meantime, you can really enjoy driving the hell out of it. It just loves it. And uh, it's such a nice, personal, luxurious way to be. Um, so if you have an interest, give us a call. 239-649-7300. Let's get some cool seats going here. On the web at MercedesExpert.com. Always happy to talk to you about uh, whatever cars we have. And this is a nice one, so give us a call on this. Uh, thank you very much. Take care, and we'll see you with the next one.